Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial on how to create an animated third person character for you to control using Mixamo. Now, unlike 99% of the tutorials on YouTube, this does work and a shout out to Trenton for helping me uh, set this up. So, to begin, you want to be in a third person level. If you've already created one, awesome. If you haven't, make sure you do so. And then by default, it usually has a project name. So my project eight is what this is one's called. I'll just go ahead and create it. Now yours is gonna be named whatever you have it currently. And I'll just point it out at the top once this level loads up that the name of your level is right up here. So this is my project eight. And I'll show you later on how to update that should you want to. Okay, so now that we have our game kind of set up, what I'd like you to do next is go over to Mixamo.com and sign up for an account if you don't already have one. If you do have an account, awesome. What you want to do after that is get or import a character. So you could go online and get a character that's in a T-Pose and import it into Mixamo. Or if you want to, you could go into Maya and create a character or you can go to the characters tab over here and by default they have like a lot of default characters and you could choose one okay now my character uh, Super Majin Buu I grabbed it from online so I just found this great model and I decided to use it so I got it I imported it I, or I uploaded it and now I can animate it if I wanted to but to start I need the the skin of this character that's the first thing we're gonna need so we're gonna download this character or whatever character you have just by going to download and then make sure it's FBX and T pose and then go ahead and download that once your character has been downloaded to find the file right away just click on the arrow if you're in Google Chrome which I'm in and go show in folder and it should open up the T pose character so this is mine I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out and now you need to go to your unreal project folder now for everyone their folder location might vary but for me my folders in documents and then unreal projects and then I'm I'm using my project 8 if you remember what I called it at the start so you just need to find the unreal projects folder you might be able to do a search for it if you can't find it uh, but I'm gonna jump into my projects 8 gonna go over to content and then go over to third person okay and I want to make sure that's third person. Uh, let's actually go to third person BP. Okay. And over here, we're going to create a new folder. So we got our blueprints, we got our maps. Just right click, create a new folder and call it character. And then open up the character folder, right click. And let's create a new folder here. And we'll just call this one Mixamo. Okay. So a folder within a folder. Then I'm going to right click and paste that character into that folder. Okay, I'm going to minimize this for now and jump back into Unreal. And if you just wait a second, a message is going to pop up on the bottom. It says a change to source content has been detected. Would you like to import it? And go ahead and press import. It's going to pop this up. And this is the first time we're importing this. So we want to import both the skeletal mesh and the import mesh. And then we're just going to go ahead and I believe let's go ahead and take a risk at this click import all okay it's gonna take a, a little bit to process but let's go ahead and give it a second okay and then that took about a minute or so for me I now have a character folder over here now there's also a good chance you're gonna get your message log popping up with all these warnings it doesn't matter as long as it loaded into unreal we can just go ahead and close out of all these warnings so I'm gonna go over to character Mixamo and then it's taken our character, it's divvied it up into its skeleton, its, uh, its, uh, its meshes, and then all the textures that it consists of, okay? So if you want to see the character itself and its T-pose, you're going to click on the picture with like the purple line underneath it. So this is just your character model. Now my Majin Buu model is ridiculously small um, compared to the rest of the stage, so your character might also uh, be ridiculously small. I'm going to click on that and this is just a physics model and it's not very elaborate at this point. Okay, now you probably don't need to do this, but just because I know my character is going to like import really small, I'm going to select the character over here. Um, 
Or actually, I'm, I, I won't mess with this. I'll, I'll mess with it possibly later. Okay, uh, we're going to now go to our third person character. So select your third person character. I'm going to adjust my screen a little bit. You don't need to do this, but because I have dual monitors, I'm going to split this off. Uh, so now I can just see my, my character or have more space over here. I'm going to just minimize this as well if it lets me, but it probably won't. Okay, well, I tried. Okay, so select your third person character and then go to edit blueprint, open blueprint editor. Okay, so by default, you're going to see all the code that currently consists of your character. And then if you go over to your viewport, you'll see your character. Uh, you can click on mesh inherited on the side over here. And then you can also see the animation that's being used um, and the the anime or the the skeletal mesh over here. So it's using SK Mannequin. I'm going to go ahead and switch that switch that to my other character over here. And it added Boo, and you could see how small Boo is compared to the to the previous character. So I'm just going to press my R key, and I'm just going to scale this character up. So that it fits and you want it to fit you know roughly within the hitbox capsule that originally held the character uh, and you want it to kind of be matched up with the camera so that's looking pretty good right now uh, if we go ahead and compile this and then minimize that and press play you'll notice that now the character exists on the stage and it can move around but it just kind of remains in that t-pose so we need to go ahead and grab a couple animations and import them into Unreal as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Head back into Mix, and there's four animations we want to get. The first is the idle animation. So I'm going to make sure I'm in the Animations tab and type in idle. Okay, and then there's a number of different idle animations. I'm going to get one that looks like my character's fighting, so maybe something like that. And there's also... Uh, overdrive which can speed up an animation as you could tell and then character arm space which could like make your arms wider or closer together depending on what you want uh, just be careful if you're doing closer together because it will tend to to blend them okay so I'll do probably something like that and I'll slow down the overdrive to something more more relaxing so that's looking pretty good I'm gonna download this one and you could just have FBX with skin 30 frames per second and no keyframe reduction for all of these. So I'm going to download that. And next I'm going to move over to my walk animation. Okay, so let's go ahead and get maybe like this kind of a walk. And if you notice the character kind of moves from the center and out of place, if we import that into Unreal, because Unreal does all the walking animation for us, then your character will kind of blink in and out of existence, like move forward, then blink back, move forward, then blink back. So make sure you have this button checked, which is in place. So your character will just, you know, walk in place. And then once again, you could test out the overdrive if you want to create a faster or a slower animation, or if you want to kind of stretch out the arms. But find a walk animation that you want, and then download that as well. Okay. Then we're going to go over to run and find a good run animation. Now for some of these, let me put this in place, you have a new feature called style and style will allow you to create a larger run or a much shorter compact run. So if you have that, feel free to mess around with it. I kind of like how that looks. I'm going to kind of slow it down, get more of a leap to it. Uh, and that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to download that one. And then lastly, we have a jump animation. So jumps are always tricky to blend, at least from my, my limited experience so far uh, manipulating jumps. But I'm going to go ahead and find a, a decent jump. So this one, this crouch jump here looks pretty good. Or maybe this side jump. Let me select this one. Okay, so like a little bit, little bit of a hop here. That looks pretty fine. Uh, anticipation, I'm going to take a guess, is how much, yeah how much you know movement you make before you actually make the jump. So a little animation, anticipation, a lot of anticipation uh, leads to a potentially larger jump. So pick what you feel is necessary. Uh, let's see what feet does. 
<laughs> if you want it like a d -d jump or both at the same time. Okay, and then download a jump. Awesome. So now that all of those have been imported, we're going to put them in the same place. So I'm going to go show in folder. These were the four animations we just downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those, jump back into the Mixamo folder that currently has my SuperBoo asset in place, and then right click and paste all four of these animations. Okay, back in Unreal, we got four changes that have been detected, and you're just going to press import for each of them. And then we don't want to import the mesh again because we already imported it the first time with that T-Pose model. So make sure this is deselected and then just press import. Don't press import all because we don't want to import any of those textures either. So just press import. Uh, it doesn't matter if a message pops up and it's going to happen four times if you did four animations. So just make sure you check that off and then import, check off, import mesh and then import. Okay, and then after four times, it should hopefully, and I'll swing this back here, have brought in your animation. So there's my idle, my jumping, my walking, and my running. So I have all four of those. Okay, so before we delve into the nitty gritty of all this, I just wanna show you how we could quickly change like an idle animation at least. So back over in your character model, go over to the blueprint. So open the blueprint editor, uh, select your mesh over at the top over here and for the animation mode we could change it from uh, use animation blueprint to use animation asset and that just means we could fix a single animation to our character so if I went to the animation to play and I chose our idle animation and then I just compiled it and saved it and then closed out of this and ran the game you'll notice that we are now currently in idle. Now, unfortunately, we also move in idle as well. So we got one animation to play, just not the whole lot of them. So the next video is going to talk about how we can snap everything together and get our character to start running. Okay, I'll see you then. Peace.